I'm Noreen and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to visit an Easter classic, hot cross buns. These go back to the Middle Ages. They're fruity, they're sweet, they're fluffy and delicious. Let's go see how these all come together. We're gonna start making our cross, hot cross buns, which are traditional Easter bread, and I'm just gonna do it here at the mixer instead of doing an ingredient overview. Don't worry about writing down the ingredients. I will be posting this on my website, and you will be able to go over there and have a look. So to start off, this is a very rich dough, meaning it has a lot of uh, dairy end. We're gonna start off with Oh, and let me tell you, I'm actually making a double recipe, so I'm gonna be letting you know what the regular recipe amounts are. This is going to be one and a quarter cups of warmed milk. We're using whole milk. I have a stick of butter melted. And so just remember, I'm making a double batch because I'm gonna be taking this to church tomorrow. This is gonna be Palm Sunday treat for our coffee hour. Um, half a cup of granulated sugar. We'll give that a little bit of a there we go and we'll do our yeast give that a little bit of a whirl and our eggs go in here now and I have two eggs that have been slightly beaten now what I want you to do is I want you to add half the flour so you're gonna need four and a half cups total so I'm gonna add half the flour and then I'm gonna go get my shield because this can be, I don't want it to just go back on Rick. We're gonna stir that up really well. And for those of you who are gonna ask me, this is a Bosch Universal Plus mixer, and this stainless steel bowl, um, we purchased extra. It comes with a plastic one. I can leave information down below where you can uh, find out about it. You're gonna use, um, a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and a quarter teaspoon each of ground nutmeg and ground cloves. Now I've used two teaspoons of salt and a tablespoon of my um, Holiday Hearth Spice Blend. And if you're interested in learning where you can find you, the recipe for that, I'll leave a link below. I have, you're gonna use a half a cup of dried currants or dark raisins, up to you, and a half a cup of golden raisins. And you're gonna need candied orange peel. If you don't have access to candied orange peel, you can either make your own, or you can just use the, the zest of one navel orange, um, and you'll be fine. This isn't, um, this isn't something everyone really enjoys, but I love it in these rolls. It's yummy. And it's not bitter. I'm gonna blend that up. And then I'm gonna add the other half of my flour. And we're gonna get this incorporated. I'm gonna add a little more flour. Like a half a cup maybe. Turn up my speed. At this point, when it has pulled away from the bowl, like you see, I'm gonna let this knead for seven minutes. And I'll be back and I'll show you what happens next. All right, I kneaded my dough for about seven minutes. Now in my mixer, I can do that. If you have a different brand of mixer from my Bosch, then you're gonna to wanna to consult your manufacturer's instruction guide to see how long you should or can knead your bread dough without overheating your uh, particular machine. So this is a sticky dough. It's, I hate to say this, it's sticky, but it's not sticky. It was sticky coming out of the bowl because it's a very rich dough and you want it that way. You don't wanna make sure you don't add too much flour to this because your initial intention is going to be, I need to add more flour because this bread is too wet now, or this dough is too wet. Now I did add about a cup and a half extra flour to mine, but it's humid here today and my flour was super fresh so those are things that are all going to affect how much flour you add. You do not want to add 
so much flour that this dough is going to be like rock hard, okay? Because that's going to affect your your end result. Too much flour is going to equal a very tough roll. So, so you can see, right, <laughs> right. So I just oiled my board. I never put flour on my board when I remove the dough. I never put flour on it if I need it by hand. Always put a little bit of oil. And then I oiled the top and I oiled my hands too just with a little bit of coconut oil spray. And I oiled my bowl with coconut oil spray. And now we're gonna go ahead, plop this in the bowl. We're gonna let this rise until it's doubled. Then we're gonna come back and we're going to deflate it. And then we're gonna put it back in the bowl and we're going to let it rise for another hour. There are two risings on this dough before we shape it. Then there's a small rise after it's shaped. So I'm gonna let this rise twice, and then we'll be back, and we will move on to make our beautiful hot cross buns for Palm Sunday. We are back, and this is the dough after it has risen twice. Now we rose it for an hour, and then I deflated it and I put it back in the bowl and now we've raised it for another hour and a half. I will tell you, this is a very, very rich dough, meaning there are eggs, butter, and milk in it. That means it's going to be heavy. Plus we have put candied fruit and dried fruit in it and that's gonna make the dough heavy. So this is gonna take a while for it to rise, a lot longer than like the perfect sandwich loaf dough. So keep that in mind. Be patient and in the end you'll have a really great, very well developed dough that's going to give you a really nice bun that's going to have a really beautiful texture. And that's the secret. You don't ever want to skip the rising part. So we're going to deflate the dough. And my, my dough is nice and warm. I had this sitting on top of my stove as it's preheating and it's, it's really beautiful and soft. But you see, it's not sticky anymore. Because we've risen it twice and we've developed it, this dough is ready to be rolled into buns. I'm going to divide it in half and I'm gonna put half in the bowl. I have my oven preheating to 350 degrees. And now what we're gonna do is divide this up. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to start um, weighing out our dough. I just have a little bowl on my scale. And we're going for three and a half ounces. This dough is really beautiful and soft. So you wanna, you know, you wanna aim for three and a half, but if you get 3.4 or 3.6, you can call that good. That's not good. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna divide this up and then we'll come back and I'll show you how we're gonna make sure that the all the rolls are beautiful and perfectly round. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to make these look like these. This is what you want your rolls to look like before you set them to rise for the last time. So you're gonna take your clump of dough and you're gonna make sure the top is kind of smooth. And then you're just going to kind of pull this in. The reason I do this here, I don't do this with rolls that don't have stuff in them. Take this pinched part on the bottom and set it down on the board. Take your hand and cup it over the top and applying gentle pressure onto the board Roll your hand, just move your hand in a circle and then the roll is going to roll around inside the palm of your cupped hand, like so. Now you have a beautifully smooth roll that's ready to go. We'll do that again. Just kind of fold this in to the center, pinch it in, flip it over, cup your hand, apply gentle pressure and roll. Make your, put the heel of your hand on the board cup your hand over the roll and then move the heel of your hand in a circle. The motion will cause the roll to go around and around in the palm of your hand and that will smooth out the roll into the perfectly shaped dough ball. So I'm gonna go finish forming up all of my hot cross buns and we'll be back and I'll show you what they look like and we will move on to making the cross part. All right, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make the paste, it's a flour and sugar paste that forms the crosses on top of our hot cross buns. Now what you see in front of you is what you're gonna need to make one single recipe. So you're gonna need a half a cup of flour, a half a cup of sugar, and then we're just gonna mix that up. And you wanna do this while your rolls are rising. Mine are almost done rising. 
and then we're going to start adding our water. Now we're not going to add all this, I'm going to actually add half of it right now. You want this to be very thick, like thick pancake batter, but you want it to be pipeable, okay? Because we're going to run this through a pastry bag, and if you don't have a pastry bag, don't, don't worry because you can go ahead and use a zip top bag that you've cut the corner off of and, and just use it like a pastry bag, no worries. And that is not quite thick enough, so I may add just a skosh of flour to that. Let's see where we are with that now. And this is how you make traditional hot cross buns. The cross is actually baked right into the roll. And I think we're good. I think that will be good. Okay, so we'll be back in just a moment, and we will pipe the crosses on our rolls before we put them in the oven. All right, I'm just gonna, I put, I put my paste in a zip top bag because I didn't feel like going to my pantry and getting a piping bag and digging it out. And these are just over my kitchen sink. So I snipped the corner, make sure you don't make it too big. I probably snipped off less than a quarter of an inch. And you're just gonna go ahead and you're gonna pipe this evenly into a cross, right? To cross the top of each bun. And then you're gonna turn your pan and you're gonna do it all over again, making crosses. And just squeeze and apply even pressure. And if you connect them a little, it's not a big deal. We do have one more step after these come out of the oven. I'm gonna pop these in the oven right now for 15 to 18 minutes and I'll be back when they're done and I'll show you what they look like. All right, our hot cross buns have come out of the oven and you see some of them split and this can happen um, if you over need your dough. That's what I did, so guess what? Don't over need your dough. I probably over need my dough by by a few minutes and this is, this is what happens when that happens. So don't do what I did and knead your dough just until it gets to the point where um, it's one cohesive mass and it's not too, too sticky. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna glaze these. I'm not worried about these. People are gonna enjoy them anyway, so it's all good. It's all good. Uh, what I have here is a quarter of a cup of golden syrup that I have heated up until it's nice and liquidy. If you don't have golden syrup, you can liquefy some apple jelly and that will give you the same kind of thing, this uh, result. So we're gonna glaze each one and it's gonna give them a nice sticky glaze. And it's gonna make them beautiful and shiny. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this and then we'll be back when these are cool enough to try because even though I know Rick would eat these hot from the pan. I'd risk it. Yeah, I know you'd risk it, honey. We're gonna wait, and then we'll come back and we'll show you what these look like. And there you have it, our hot cross buns, all ready to take to church in the morning for Palm Sunday service. These are delicious. I'm not gonna lie to you, we already tried some. I vouch for it. And they're really, really good. I do wanna show you, I got one of the broken ones here, and I sliced it in half. Would you please look at the crumb on that? It's, it's beautiful, they're soft, they're lightly sweet. Oh, they have all that fruit in there and they're absolutely beautiful. That golden syrup, these are still warm. That golden syrup's gonna give these just the most perfect sticky finish of all. And I can't wait to share them at church tomorrow. I know that everyone's gonna just enjoy these a lot. So I hope that you give these hot cross buns a try during this Easter week and I hope that you love them. They're really very simple. They take a little bit of time. So this is something you're gonna wanna do when you have the day off and you can schedule it because it does have to go through literally three risings all together. So it is a little time consuming but oh so worth it in the end. Piping on the paste cross, in my opinion, is a superior way to go, but if you don't wanna do that, you can totally use the powdered sugar and water frosting and do it that way. But just be sure you glaze it with the either the golden syrup or the apple jelly because I promise you, it makes all the difference. 
So I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoyed the recipe. I want to thank you for joining me today. And if you did have a good time, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're not already, please hit that subscribe button. If you are subscribed, be sure and hit the notification button because we don't want you to miss out on any of the real food for real people, real easy recipes that we present all the time right here in our YouTube channel and straight from our kitchen. I hope you give hot cross buns a try and I hope that you love them. And until next time, I'll see ya.